Disney to to actually break up because when you look at Disney right now, it is lagging behind so many of its competitors. It had two movies that came out, two movies that were basically like total busts. I didn't even hear about these movies. Like all anybody's been talking about has been Barbie and Oppenheimer. But anyway, they had one called Indiana Jones. They got Harrison Ford back for that and Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny. And then they had, uh, well, another one, Haunted Mansion. And neither of these performed. Neither of these performed. Uh, they were two films that cost uh, quite, a, quite a bit of money. Apparently, it was $295 million that they spent on Indiana Jones and $150 million that they spent on Haunted Mansion. And people just didn't go. So they've basically, you know, they're looking at what this particular article, and this is the direct.com, is calling pretty much a failure because you have to make a certain amount of money, right, just to recoup your investment. So according to the direct.com, it's saying that would equate to the Dial of Destiny, Harrison Ford's Disney movie, losing over $100 million for the studio based on the results that they've seen thus far. Look, I mean, hey, you know, you could pull an Elemental and pull something out of your you-know-what and, like, suddenly turn yourself around as Elemental did, but I don't think so. Meanwhile, they got another big one coming their way over there at Disney, Snow White, they're they're banking on this one, Snow White, to to really kind of help boost them. The only problem is, once again, they're in this situation where they're alienating, significantly alienating their viewers. They're they're the people that like like Disney and like Snow White, and part of it's because they called it Snow White, and um, well, it's called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and now they've got Snow White and one dwarf, six tall people. So that's not flying over so well with people. And then you look at all the nonsense that say ESPN has gotten itself in with host after host after host leaving, departing, getting kicked out the door because they voice some political opinion. And you get people you know, taking a knee or refusing to put their hand over their heart when they hear the national anthem over on the sports side. And so ESPN is getting a little bit ugly. And don't forget that whole ABC News arena and the ABC network. That's a legacy business that has got to change. And the upside of that, for all of you that don't particularly care for this particular person. Not to impeach yeah. What bribery scam? Yes. <laughs> but I, I'm sorry. I'm, I, it's always, it's so different every day. I mean, you know, they're either freaking out about Barbie or they're upset about, you know, uh, Budweiser beer and just Bud and Light. Just Bud Light. <laughs> Bud Light. Okay. No, actually, she's wrong. And actually, everybody's upset about Budweiser in general. Sales of Budweiser, by the way. They have been falling, not as much as Bud Light, which are down 30% in the last week, but Budweiser too, down about 8%. Anyway, the point is that woman that, you know, maybe you don't like so much, guess what? She's not, she's not going to be there that long. Or if she is, she's going to make a whole lot less money because Bob Iger, very smartly, this is the new CEO of Disney. He came in because it was just a disaster with Bob Chapek and they got really woke. And I'm not saying the Bob's not, the other Bob Iger's not woke. He is. He is, but I think he's also a businessman and he's like, wait a second, we got we to gotta like take stock here. So he sat down recently with this CNBC anchor and did this interview. I'll, I'll share it with you. And uh, you can read between the lines, can you not? Transformative work is dealing with businesses that are no growth businesses and what to do about them and particularly the linear business, which we are expansive in our thinking about and we're going to look. Anyway, he says we're going to look expansively. And when he says expansively, he says, you know, you can, and and the anchor comes back and says, wait, does that mean you're going to get rid of some of your legacy TV businesses? Are you going to get rid of ABC? And he said, well, I'll let you interpret what expansively means. Well, I'll just tell you right here, right now, expansively means bye-bye, sayonara, see ya, whoopee. (laughs) That's what it means, really. And they would be smart to do that because the business is changing so rapidly. I mean, here we are right now, and, and we're able to, to communicate directly together. It's kind of like a 3D universe where I can see what you're saying in real time, and we, we ha- and it's just gonna get better, right guys? Because like pretty soon, like Leslie, you'll be able to like join us on the show, right? And, and, and Daryl, we'll, we'll be able to go straight to you and, and you'll be able to voice your opinion. We'll, we'll, we'll all be able to do this together. Like it is changing. 
so incredibly. And you know what I love about it is that I feel like, and we'll talk about some of the Hunter stuff, and we'll talk about the Bidenomics stuff, and we're going to talk about a few other things, that Gaston flag story. I've got an update for you. We'll talk about all that. But what I love about this and, and is that it is sort of this 3D environment, and we have the chance to actually really speak the truth. And as long as the platforms are willing to let us get out there, subscribe, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure that you hit the bell too. As long as we're allowed to sort of get out there and, and, and meet and speak, et cetera, then guess what? They can't control the narrative anymore. That's sort of a subdivision. And we'll get to that in a second before I get through sort of what's going on from a business point of view. But I just say that as an American and as an individual, that is what I love, that we can all connect together. Yes, Leslie, I do know your opinion. <laughs> um, anyway, back to Disney. So shares are trading lower today, the market closed. And once again, you're seeing shares of Disney. Let me get the exact price right now. They are under pressure because this week they hit a nine year low, a nine year low guys. All right. Like this is $82.47 a share. That's the nine year low. So if they, if they can climb back from that, they're in business. People are getting a little bit more excited right now because there is talk of a breakup and they love the idea of like selling off the parts, right? Because the parts may be worth more than the whole in this particular case. You've got very, very different businesses. You get the streaming business, you get the legacy media business, and you have the parks business. And the parks business, it's been slowing. We, we talked about that, right? Remember the big pride, Mickey pride thing, which, you know, didn't necessarily resonate with lots and lots of families and didn't maybe win them the PR that they had thought that they were going to get. That's a problem. You, you have the reality that they keep upping ticket prices, right? Because you get inflation, but they're moving faster than inflation and people's wages aren't even keeping up with inflation. So not as many people can afford the parks in this environment. And then you get those gigantically long lines. Oh my gosh. Like you haven't lived until you've spent a day in a Disney line. I got like nightmares of those lines from when I was a kid. I mean, you can spend a lot of extra money and like I, I, I'm guilty of this. I feel terrible. <laughs> a little aside here. I do feel bad because I feel like you have to, you have to sit in those lines. But we were down there a couple of years ago, you know, like five years ago, the kids were little and everybody got sick. The kids were like really, really sick. And like, we only had like two days left of the vacation. And there was, you know, no way to get all the parks in unless we did something kind of nifty, which meant spending a fortune, right, on a special pass where you get like your own Disney guide to take you around. And that's what we did. And it killed me because I'm like, you know what? The kids need to know what it feels like. I did that. It was like a pilgrimage. My family went there every single year when I was growing up as a kid. Like all, all us kids and my grandmother in the backseat of the car smushed in like sardines. And, and we would drive to Orlando, Florida because one, it was too expensive to fly. And two, my mother was terrified to fly. So somehow we drove all the way to Florida and we'd go to Disney and it would be this big deal. And we would wait in these lines, right? But that's what you did. I'm telling you, the world's changing People don't have to get excitement on your rides anymore. They can get excitement in lots of other different ways. They can watch this show, right? And we can all talk together and it's way better than waiting in a Disney line. Disney's going to figure out how to manage those lines. So the parks business is a mess. The rides are breaking down. The lines are too long. The tickets are too expensive. And then they got the giant, you know, gay parade for, again, nothing, nothing wrong with that. But you know what? People don't want to pay some umpty dump amount of money to then get these values shoved down their throats. Similar thing going on at the box office with some of the movies that they have had out. I, I have not seen Indiana Jones. I have not seen Haunted Mansion. So I don't know what kind of political message those things have. But, you know, you had a few others along the way that did not do so well, in part because of these political messages that they were trying to convey. So Disney's underperforming. When you look at sort of all the competitors, they're doing much better. And consequently, you've got one analyst. I think he's onto something. This is Michael Nathanson. He's an analyst at Moffat Nathanson. He's questioning the structure of the company. And he's like, well, why, why do you have like so many divisions? Why are you doing so much? Like kind of pare down, focus on what you can do. Maybe have a Disney one and a Disney two. And you have two separate companies. One is Parks. And one would be sort of the entertainment section, the streaming, the film's business. Already Bob Iger, the CEO, has indicated that he's at least interested in sort of siloing these into films, parks, and streaming. Um, the, the business as we know it, consider like ESPN. This is all relevant when I get to Fox, by the way, because we're going to talk about two different strategies. ESPN 
hey, that's, that's great, right? But Disney's realizing it doesn't want to be in the cable business anymore, that the streaming business is actually way more valuable. And so consequently, it wants to take ESPN direct to consumers. Why does it need to be part of an affiliate bundle? Why does it need to be part of, say, you know, AT&T or DirecTV or any of these things? Like, if it can actually just go directly to you, the consumer, like, like we're doing right here. Well, that's smart. It doesn't need to go through all these different layers. It can cut out the middlemen. And it can consequently make more money directly from customers. I mean, as far as customers go, you know, it may not be great because, well, it is great. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it means that you're not going to get as many channels probably, right? Like if if everybody's going direct to customers. But, but the flip side of that is you're going to get what you want because you're going to go out there and make a market decision to say, okay, this is what I want to watch or this is what I'm going to pay for. And I think that that sort of empowers the people so to speak. That's what capitalism does. You know, that's why every time they try the socialism thing, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. I don't know how many times we have to go through that all around the world for people to figure it out. I guess they just like control. Anyway, so Disney is, uh, well, I, I mean, I just think that the only way they can go is up because at least they have a CEO who gets it. And, you know, whether you want to quibble about his politics, leaving that aside, I think he realizes that This is a company that has gotten too big for its own good. It doesn't know what it's doing anymore. It doesn't know how to do any of the storytelling that it used to do in the past that it was so known for. So consequently, the films, they're just busting out and, you know, the parks are a mess and the streaming business, if they're smart, which by the way, they're not doing so great on that either because they had a huge loss in subs. That's what they would be focusing on, right? Like, I think we can say that here together. Don saying right now, Disney has been using acquisitions to model the balance sheet. They've been doing that. And so they need to get clean numbers, you know, every quarter. Look, everybody kind of like is out there modeling their balance sheets, right? There's there's some accusations um, for sure against Disney. In fact, I think there's a big lawsuit as you may be referring to there, Don, about exactly all those things because they're trying to make their streaming business look better than it is, et cetera. Shareholders are suing, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, point being, this company has got to change. It's just got to change. It's got to keep pace with the future. Hey, everyone, Trish Regan here. If you enjoyed that clip, please do me the favor of subscribing to the channel. Just hit that little subscribe button right over there. Did I do that right? Uh, Not quite, but you know where it is. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you get the alerts, and I'll see you back on the show.